right, welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us as we go over the highlights of the challenge week for the Rhode Island Genealogical Society. And I'm hoping everybody can see my screen. Great, okay. So for those who may not know, um, let me take you over to the help page for the WikiTree Challenge. The WikiTree Challenge is our WikiTree's largest ongoing community event. This is where volunteers work on the, growing the connections for the seven ancestors provided by our guests for seven days. So it's a full week of us all working together to, to grow out those connections. So it starts with this forum post, um, the community forum, where we start, people volunteer and we start uh, collaborating after the week starts. Um, we use the G2G post. Um, we have, there's a post for each, a post answer for each of the ancestors. And for people who are um, focused on one of the ancestors, they can collaborate together on that post answer. And then also we have what's called a free space page. That's all about the challenge. So this is your free space page for the challenge number 18. And I've got the links for everything in the chat. The forum post is also linked here on the space page. So we have at the top of the page, we have the starting profiles. And then further down the page, there's the fun part of the page tells us, tell us what you found. This is where people report in all the different information that they found on for the week. So you can see all the different locations in this section from Armenia to Scotland and 12 different states of the United States that they've worked on profiles for. It's really a lot of fun to, you know, we start in Rhode Island and very quickly we go way out into the world <laughs> all over the place so it's, that's a lot of fun. The next section is our interesting finds. So as we find interesting stories uh, we report them here and as you'll see in the slideshow we're going to share uh, next up we also do what's a, called a survey and the members vote on the top seven. There's also a section on military profiles. So if there are ancestor profiles that get created or get connected to your ancestor profiles, we note them here. So there's some interesting stories that um, are um, around the military or different wars that occurred. So you can learn more about, about those ancestors there. And if we scroll down just a little bit further, there's a section on free space pages. So you'll see there's one here that a member created and it's all about um, Ephraim Codner and his Rhode Island origins. So it goes really more into depth about it. So that, that'll be something for, um, members of your society to, to maybe check out and more about what that was all about. Uh, linked also at the top of the page of this free space page is um, the score sheet, if you're interested in that. And you can see all the different members that partook. Uh, 42 members worked on profiles. Uh, they did all different kinds of things. Some people focused on writing biographies and some people focused on uh, adding more profiles or connections. So all different kinds of work can be done. If some people are more interested in writing the biography or finding sources, there's definitely something for everybody. All right, so next I'm gonna go ahead and start the slideshow that Aon has put together for us. So, um, next, we're going to go through the ancestor profiles. One of the profiles that we have is for Christine, Christiana Bannister. 
Christina was a noted abolitionist, hairdresser, and wig maker. Wig maker. You can see her listed as hair doctress. So her profile is really fully fleshed out. Uh, you can really read all about her. Um, they did a lot of great work on writing up her profile. So in the occupation sections that they have here, they've really listed out what she's listed at. And I really thought it was interesting that her salons were a popular meeting place for abolitionists. You can see they've got the little tax assessments for Boston for her. Just some really interesting information how they broke it out. So you can see too at the top of the page, uh, we have what's called um, projects on WikiTree where the, they're focused on different subjects or maybe locations. So she is part of the US Black Heritage Project. So that's what this box is up here at the top, noting that she's part of US Black History. And we have a great picture of her here too, it's great. <laughs> All right, and the next profile that we'll go through is, um, what is this? Ephraim Codner. So I just wanna point out on this profile um, that Wikitree is a great place to have your ancestor information because not only can you write out this biography, the story of their life, you can have a section which we have here. You can see here is the research notes. You can use this section to work through information from various members or there may be um, conflict between sources. You can kind of outline that here and work together with other members to collaborate and iron out which what the correct way to, to go is uh, based on the sources. Also here you can see that a member has uploaded a colonial land record. And if we go to that image, you can see that you can attach multiple people to the images. So it's, or even if there is a space page, you can attach a space page. For instance, um, you could use, if you've scanned a, a will in, you can upload the image and you can attach it to a space page where you've done the transcription. So it's just a way to use the different uh, resources on Wikitree. The next profile is for Easton. And I just wanna show you here how you can see quickly if somebody is connected to the global tree. Some of these profiles were only had a few connections when the challenge started. Um, so they weren't connected to the tree. So a quick way you can tell if somebody's connected is if you scroll down to the bottom of the profile, you can see right here, it says that Easton is 15 degrees from our profiles of the week. Sandra Day O'Connor, 21 degrees from Jane Birkin. So that's a, that's a quick way to just check to see if they're connected to the tree. You can also check your connection to this person at the bottom here. Next profile, I was really interested in this one, Mary Elizabeth Larravee. She is the, uh, called the queen of baseball. So she made history as the first female player to play against major league players in 1922. So I thought that was very interesting. And they did a great job working up her profile. Another great read. The next profile is for Charles Henry Short. On Charles' profile, you can see He's been added to what we call a category. If you scroll down to the bottom of the page again for his profile, through the sources, memories and comments, matches and merges down here at the bottom, you can see there's a category, the different categories. And one of the categories is for weavers. 
So if you open up that category, you can see um, different, if there's subcategories, which there are here, you can also see that there are 360 ancestor profiles that are part of this category. And one thing you can do in any category, which is one of my favorite things about Wikitree, is you can go to here and click this My Connections button. And if you click that, it will show you any weavers in the category that you have connections to. So this first box shows you your ancestors and cousins that are categorized as weavers, and then any that are just connections through marriage. So that was one of the things that drew me to Wikitree was being able to check your connections to everybody once you're connected to that global family tree. Okay, and Samuel is our next ancestor. He's the father of American Industrial Revolution. Wikitreeers did a wonderful job on this profile. It's really um, well-written biography with images in the biography. Uh, just really great example of how that can be formatted out to look really great. Okay, and the last profile, ancestor profile, is for Walter Norris Williams. On Walter's profile, I just want to turn on the Wikitree browser extension just to kind of highlight that briefly. Um, it's a browser extension and it just allows you to dial in how you want to view or use Wikitree. So I'm just going to turn that on and I'm going to refresh the page. And right away, you see here at the top, the 17 degrees. So right away with a glance, we can tell he's connected to the tree and he's 17 degrees away from me because I'm logged in. Uh, so that's a lot of fun. And then if I go back over to uh, one of the other profiles really quickly, let me open up. Um, yeah, so Easton Cole, if we open up Easton Cole's profile, you can also see in addition to being 14 degrees away, he's my sixth cousin, six times removed. And it tells you what that relationship is through. If there are multiple ways you're connected to them, <laughs> then it shows you all of those if you open that up. So that's just a really, um, one of the few ways, I mean, there are many options within the Wikitree browser extension. Those are just a few little highlights of that um, option. Uh, extension. All right, so we're going to go back to the slideshow. So Wikitreeers did a great job adding families to these ancestors and for some getting them connected to the tree. The largest increase was 2,278 profiles uh, are now within seven degrees of Easton Cole. And the total increase in connections for the week was 4,638. So that's really exciting. The closest connection between the seven ancestors was between Ephraim and Easton. They're within 11 degrees from each other. And you can see here what, where that, how that works out. So Ephraim's son, and his son and his wife. <laughs> so you could follow the relationship path um, using the connection to me option. Or um, you can put in a put in if you do connection to me, then you can put in somebody else's profile ID too. So you can check between two different profiles besides yourself. Okay, and then Charles Short is 20 degrees away from Ephraim and Samuel Slater both. This is just showing the relationship path for Ephraim and Charles. And then here's Charles and Samuel Slater. And we found this really interesting. Ephraim was 14 degrees away from Samuel Slater. 
16 degrees away from Walter Williams, 18 degrees away from Christiana Bannister. <laughs> so they're all pretty closely connected actually. Okay, so this is what I was talking about earlier, the top seven interesting finds that were voted on by the WikiTree challenge participants. So Hannah Slater is uh, Samuel's wife and she is um, among the first American women to receive a patent for thread. She used a hand spinning wheel to spin it, spin um, cotton into thread, and it turned out to be stronger than linen thread, which I thought was really interesting. My mom's a seamstress, so this was very interesting to me. <laughs> and of course, Samuel, father of the American Industrial Revolution, he pioneered the American textile industry. And Jackson, Andrew Jackson, this quoted as saying, I understand you have taught us how to spin. John Hubers, I thought this was very interesting too. Uh, he was convicted of having milk in his possession that contained less than 12% solids and less than 3.25 milk, milk, milk vats. I didn't know that was a crime. <laughs> so that was re really interesting. James Howe is the next one. This one is about the brothers. Um, they did a voyage. They completed it. They were expected home very soon, but they wrecked off the coast of Cape Cod that same year and all lives were lost. So very sad there. Judge Thomas Durfee is our next one. A judge and a poet. So during the US Civil War, he was a frequent cr contributor to papers and it is said his pen was powerful in support of the Union cause. He published also The Village Picnic and other poems, a collection of poems capturing the beauty and charm of rural life in the mid 19th century. All right. So these next three finds were just ones that um, Ao and I had picked out and wanted to share. These are um, within seven degrees. The first one here is Ruth Slater. And, and actually we wanted to kind of show about uh, the four, her and her four sisters. Um, they were very interest, had very interesting lives. Uh, if you look at her profile, this excerpt that is written out, it was a very interesting. It says, these women, except perhaps Ruth, were not intellectuals in the modern sense, but they knew history, knew the classic authors, knew something about con contemporary trends in music, art, and the literature. And most important, they placed a high value on mental activity. So just thought this, they, their lives were very interesting. Unfortunately, Ruth turned to drugs. Um, and she remained addicted to cocaine for the rest of her life. But they all had um, really very interesting lives. Uh, Catherine Slater um, unfortunately died of Bright's disease. But again, very, very interesting women. Uh, definitely check out that. I think there may be a space page in the works about these five sisters. All right, the next one we wanted to point out um, is Nelson Rockefeller. So Nelson, this is, this is another one of the seven interesting finds. Um, Nelson Rock Rockefeller was born on 8th of July in 1908. And he uh, was the vice president under Gerald Ford, 49th governor of New York. So if you go to his profile, he is Rockefeller 101. You can read more about him. As you can see there all the information about him. There's lots of good pictures. 
Okay, and the next. So this is um, um, more about the sisters. These are the four sisters, Ruth, Georgia, Lydia, and Hope, and Catherine. The next um, interesting find that Ao and I wanted to point out was Joseph Stanton, General Stanton. He's seven degrees from Ephraim Codner. He was a soldier and a politician. Um, let me go ahead and open up his profile here for you. And he has, uh, there's a, they have, uh, his home is listed on the National Register. And it's shown there. And he had partook in the French and Indian War and the um, Revolutionary War. So he's a DAR Patriot ancestor. And we'll see here, there's a section on legacy. So the SS Joseph Stanton is a Liberty ship built in the United States during World War II. It was named after him. And then there's a memorial marker on US Route 1 in Charleston, Rhode Island. And there's also General Stanton Inn in Charleston, Rhode Island. So just very interesting gentleman. Hugh Cole is one that we wanted to point out as well. So he is Easton Cole's fourth great grandfather. He held positions related to the land and highway management, involved in numerous legal proceedings and his home was burned during King Philip's War. So if we go to his profile here, you can read more about him. They have a rock marking the old well at the coal house site, and that's um, pictured here on the side. They've done a really great job of this profile, outlining his life and everything about, about him. And again, just pointing out the research notes section that they've utilized here. Um, this is what I was talking about earlier, that this is, you know, making a statement that there are many publications with accounts uh, about the relationship with King Philip, but no historical records were found to authenticate them. So this is a good way to make your case and um, make sure it's available for other members to see, kind of explaining um, maybe why something wasn't used or um, some other point that needs to be collaborated on. All right. So thank you to everybody who contributed to this week of um, collaborating on the seven ancestors. I wanted to open it up. Um, Patrick uh, is here with us and Guillaume, Kathy's here. Um, and I just wanted to point out that we have, Guillaume was a bounty point. So he got 90 bounty points <laughs> and Patrick did an awesome job as well. He's right there at the top with 228 uh, profiles added for the short line. So we have some, um, members that just did a lot of work. There were a total of 229 bounty points that were awarded. So please, um, if anybody would like to share, um, Patrick, I know you started to share earlier about um, what you were working on. If you wanna go ahead and kind of expand a bit a little bit about that now that we're recording, it'll be preserved for posterity. <laughs> I, I think it was funny that the, person who was chosen for the the contest um shared the same name as my wife just kind of a coincidence and i didn't know that going into it that i was working on profiles related to them oh that's but, awesome yeah i love it one of uh short's great granddaughters that um had proposed that we we follow them and then her name was Danny, Danny Graham, or her maiden name, and my wife's married name is Danny Graham. So that was just a really wow. coincidence. That is. <laughs> That's great. 
Does anybody else have anything to share or would, does anybody have any questions? All right. Well, if everybody is ready to close up, I guess we're gonna close up a little bit early. All right, thank um, you very much for focusing on the Rhode Island Genealogical Society. Yeah, we had a lot of fun. And again, the links for everything is are in the chat and we will be posting uh, the video, the highlight video out on our channel and it will be going out on all forms of social media um, so that everybody can get the link for it. All right, well, thank you everyone for joining and hope everybody has a great evening. Thank you, happy new year. <laughs>